For this lesson, a simple pencil drawing of a truck will be done. It's based on a photograph I took in Australia of an old abandoned truck on a farm. Um, it's got many interesting features, but it needs to essentially to be broken down into simple elements. Uh, a quick schematic drawing will demonstrate what the truck is essentially composed of. It's a series of rectangular blocks. Uh, you can see receding, slight kind of angling away according to the perspective. Uh, the container at the back is another rectangle, circles for the wheels, and the undercarriage, just additional line work supporting those rectangles which are above the chassis. The drawing itself is done very lightly and quickly. It's a light touch that's needed with the pencil, and not pressing at all hard, just a kind of feathery line which can easily be corrected. I don't use a rubber of any sort with this kind of drawing, if at all possible. Um, by doing it as lightly as this, following the direction of the schematic drawing that we saw earlier, you can map in your drawing and you won't need a rubber. Now, firmer lines are applied over the light under drawing. The lines, as you can see, are not continuous, they're broken, but they're drawn with some confidence because your underdrawing has done the hard work for you. So now details like the radiator and the front of the cabin, uh, the top with the windows and the side doors, noticing the bulge at the side as well, slight curvature on the edges of the shapes. The wheel is an important part, it's actually quite a large wheel as part of the perspective of the photograph and it translates into the same effect with the pencil drawing but all of the drawing as you can see is gone over with firm lines once that's in place you can look to shade the rest of the picture and this is simple block shading added into the cabin these darkened areas will suddenly add depth to parts of the drawing like this cross hatching which is applied to the back of the cabin itself and along the sides I'm doing some more textural line work and a little bit of shading there. Deeper shading underneath the wheel arch because that's a focal point in the drawing. But the addition of shadow textural lines suddenly brings the drawing alive and gives it much greater depth. An important feature is the shadow extending off the cabin to the right and final details really just can be worked in from there to we arrive at the truck. It looks more detailed than it really is but in terms of the texture work and the shading it's a satisfactory drawing. The next demonstration is of an elk. Um, it's from a picture from a student, a Canadian elk and it's going to be done in acrylics. For the purpose of this drawing I've done a very loose pencil sketch as a preliminary uh, and that just indicates very very roughly where the animal will go and now the basic colour tones are blocked in with a medium sized brush so browns of mid dark light quality and greens are added to the background. Light greens and dark greens but all the basic colours are just blocked in. Antlers and a few little details. Once the antlers are roughed in I'm going round the antlers and the head and the body with some darker paint to establish that clearly. Um, this is part of the skill when it comes to Drawing from photographs, you have to reinterpret the photograph, rearrange it, take the elements that you want, change the colours, you can do what you like in many respects, but you do have to clarify, and this is what this is trying to do. Nice dark area around the elk, and building up other areas of colour as well around the rest of the picture. The different tones on the elk itself. Um, 
and spending some more time clarifying the antlers because they're quite tricky. So I'm extending them a little bit, giving them a bit more body in terms of colour and darkening the areas around the antlers too. Now I'm coming back to pay some more attention to those green areas. You need a good variety of green. One flat tone will look rather dull right throughout. So there's various greens worked in. A little bit of work underneath the eye itself to make it stand out with greater clarity. A dot of colour in the middle. And I'm using a finer brush at this point um, in order to pull the image together a little more effectively. So I'm adding texture and details, suggesting the fur, uh, working on the antler and the ear. It will still require more work with a slightly bigger brush in places, but I want to establish some more form. So the foliage is picked out, suggestive squiggles, um, giving a hint of foliage. I'm now in a position just to carry on working this up to completion as you can see in the finished image. It's quite suggestive, apparent detail, not great demand, but enough in the elk and the foliage to either side. The rest is really quite suggestive and loose and light. The last piece is going to be a demonstration of a watercolour sketch. It's of a lady in Vietnam. Uh, she's carrying two panniers and it's a rather interesting picture in itself. Uh, there is no pencil underdrawing in this type of study. The watercolour is worked directly onto the page and the most important features are to map out where the hand and hands and face are located. Once they're in place, in a balanced layout on the page, work can be done on the rest of the picture. So the hat is painted in, the jacket, a nice deep blue with some black added to it, a purple with an uh, area of clear line running through it, which will be important later, as you'll see, um, a little bit of dark colour added to the wet purple paint, and now some work on the actual pole holding the panniers. The panniers are indicated underneath. I'm using the same brush for all of this, a number five brush. Uh, a little bit more detail now on shoes, some dark tones added to the tips, and I'm working up the face, the jacket. You can see the little dots of red, um, the red on either side of the face underneath the hat. A plastic bag is quite eye-catching. Again, clear white areas, just lines running through it, important to suggest the, the cords. And now uh, the whole shape is really roughed in. You can see there's a lighter tone. Uh, there are two tones on the face. There's the darker tone and the lighter tone, and that's going to indicate where the details will go. The jacket is worked up with some additional blues, and an additional purple is laid over the purple underneath. That, that gives it much more believability. It feels like that's a, a proper form, three-dimensional shape. Um, a wash is applied underneath the hat, suggests the shadow, and once you've roughed in all the basic colours, it's this light grey wash applied all around the figure. Now some details on the face. Just little marks are sufficient to suggest eyes and nose. Uh, a little bit more work on the hat and working up details on the jacket and shadows to the side. That essentially is the picture. It's quite plain. Lady is transporting bananas, looks like nuts and quite a well-balanced piece. Mm -hmm.